So the NFC North, I think, look, like this is chalk, I think, for the most part. But the Packers, I don't feel as confident about the Packers winning this division as I do for other division winners that I predicted. I'm a huge fan of Aaron Rodgers, the player. In my opinion, I've never seen, besides maybe, I love, I, Pat Mahomes is really great, but Rodgers has had less help throughout his career. The precision with which he passes, the I, people still underrate him because they they only understand rings. That's the only thing that the casual fan cares about, and they don't talk about how this is a team sport where uh, Rodgers has been, I think, set up to fail for a majority of his career. His talent has propelled him to be top, and the Packers to be top seeded teams because he carries them to such a degree, but then you get to the playoffs and other teams throw the playbook at him, uh, at, at the, uh, at the Packers, they'll give it their all and they're talented and the Packers can't keep up because they don't have the talent that these other playoff teams do. And we see it year to year. And then Rogers gets blamed for choking. Um, I say the team does not give him the support and that is evidenced by the fact that he has no receiving core. Uh, he has rookies. He has Sammy Watkins. Uh, he has Alan Lazard, who, from a volume perspective and fantasy, might do well because he's the one consistent guy that they have there, really. But um, from a talent perspective, as a number one veteran receiver going into an offseason, it's, it's bad. The thing that saves the Packers from, I think, falling below the Vikings who could have a very good year. And the Vikings do this, by the way, they're in the playoffs when you're out of the playoffs, when you're in the playoffs, when you're out of the playoffs. But I, I do think uh, McConnell could elevate this team. The one thing that saves them is the Packers defense is pretty good and they have a good secondary player in J.R. Alexander. They have a decent do defensive line. And so I do think that that'll keep them in games, even if Packers are not high scoring and look, Rodgers is nearing 40, so things are going to start to decline for him, even though I've always believed in his greatness. Um, the Packers, I think, um, are essentially usually in terms of the of their receiving talent and usually in their offensive talent. They are usually just saved by how well Rodgers can elevate people who on probably other circumstances wouldn't be nearly as good. So... I think Aaron Jones is going to have a good bounce back year. I even think AJ Dillon platooning might, might have some positive presence in the offense. But beyond that, like you said, with the rookies, Romeo Dubes out of Nevada, the fourth round pick, Christian, yeah. uh, what's his name? Christian, Christian Watson, Watson out of North Dakota state. I like um, him a lot, but again, these are guys are rookies. They, they've never played in the NFL, but if, could I see them having breakout years as a result of Rogers kind of making it so absolutely. But it's just, of course, like we were saying, it's very hard to bet on literally two rookies being kind of two linchpins of your offense starting in week one. And the other thing, I agree with you on the defense piece, though, in the sense of you got a kind of diamond in the rough in Russell, Russell Douglas, uh, cornerback who was just mm -hmm. basically thrown on the scrap heap and played really well in the playoffs. Devondre Campbell got a nice deal, a great linebacker. Um, and uh, Eric Stokes, a young cornerback, uh, you know, kind of slot corner. I mean, th this, is, this is a defense that while... This is a defense that wasn't that good before and are certainly much better stocked than they were in, in years past. So I think this is a pretty well-rounded team, but I agree with you that the Vikings but it, could. And it's always well-rounded, right? Like they do, Due they never sign yeah. anybody significant in free agency. It's always decent players, but we saw this with the Rams and we saw it with the Bucks. In the modern NFL, you go all in and you accumulate impact players and the Packers will never do that given the way that they just like are constitutionally constructed even though I hope that changes because I like the Packers I like that they are a collective yep. I like that it's different you know but and of course my favorite quarterback to ever play is Aaron Rodgers even though I understand he's been very unlikable recently in terms of a player it's hard for me to to stop rooting against him given how much I loved him my whole Life. And with the Rams, obviously, it was very, very risky, but it's already paid dividends in the sense that, yes, did they mortgage their future significantly? Yes, but now they're playing with house money. They've won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. They've already achieved the goal. Yeah. So now they can just run it back, still having Jalen Ramsey, still having Aaron, still having Matthew Stafford, still having Odell, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but 
I think that's the difference is that the Packers are the Packers have never for their once in a generation talent felt it incumbent upon themselves to push all the chips into the table when they absolutely could. People aren't coming to Green Bay to play in Green Bay. They're coming to Green Bay to play with Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Use that. Yep. They but they they don't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the Vikings, though, look. Justin Jefferson. Ugh. Filthy. Dalvin Cook. Filthy. I mean, Kirk Cousins, if he gets to be rob a robot behind in Kevin McConnell's offense, he can be efficient. And I have questions about their defense, but both the Packers and the Vikings are going to feast on the week here. Um, and so I could see the Vikings, look, they could have a down year too, but I do think that Mike Zimmer was not, was made that, from what I've read and heard, that locker room pretty unhospitable he's not a fun guy to play for and M uh, kevin o'connell is going to come for did i say mcconnell earlier yeah oh really yeah. mitch mcconnell is going to come in <laughs> um kevin o'connell is going to come in the and Packers are extremely able are not they're politicizing <laughs> this division <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do the double chin and then uh, the Packers are politicizing this division <laughs> it's this pretty good very unacceptable <laughs> it's pretty good um but I could see the. I think the Vikings are going to finish second. I think they're going to make the playoffs. Um, I'll say it right now, just because I do think there's uh, the NFC is weak in general, and I think the uh, NFC North is really weak because the Lions, despite me loving Dan Campbell, loving what I've seen, loving that they are as I've said about what the Falcons are doing wrong, what the Giants did wrong under Dave Gettleman, is the. Lions are building from the inside out. They are drafting. They drafted Penny Sewell out of Oregon, left tackle. They drafted Aiden Hutchinson very enthusiastically, defensive end. Getting these guys along your two lines. It's how my favorite team in the world, the Giants, won the Super Bowl. They had a great defensive line, and a great offensive line. Building out like that is the best way to set up your team for long term success. So, do the Lions, the Lions will be hopefully in the mix for a quarterback. I hope that they have success and get somebody good because Jared Goff is not it. I don't anticipate them having great red zone efficiency because of his inability to throw in tight windows. And he, I, I don't know what PFF would say about his red zone efficiency, but my guess is it's pretty bad. Um, you know, I just, I don't believe in Jared Goff at all. And I would take someone like Daniel Jones over him, honestly. And this, and this is, this, and speaking of the Giants, this is the other team I had in mind where I was thinking they are, they are, they are team building and operating, I think, for the future. Yeah. That Jared, they are not, if, if Jared Goff succeeds with this team, that's, that's extra, essentially, to me. But I think this team is very well constructed outside of him. I think Amon Ross St. Brown is a, actually, is a Hawkinson? pretty excellent, is a pretty excellent receiver. I think Hawkinson's a pretty cornerstone tight end. I think with Pen Penny Sewell and Frank Ragnow, on that line it's an actually surprisingly great unit on in the trenches for the for the offensive line that I can keep Goff upright mm -hmm. and also Romeo Aquara on the defensive end um I I don't really know how to pronounce his name but he he I met, me I went to a um, party once with Romeo Aquara no uh, way was, yeah was he I'll cool? tell you the oh. he's really sweet he oh, was like so nice. kind of on the shire side but yeah um, I think his name is Amani or Amari on Warrior. He had a great, he had a few great games last yeah. year in the secondary. Um, I'm very high on the team in the, oh, in, in, in their, their cultural and their cultural leader, um, anime fan, Jamal Williams, who I absolutely love. What a king. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty high in the team, both in the sense of that. I think the culture is right, even for a team that's struggling. And I think they're building the right way. Yes. A hundred percent. Um, and yeah, you mentioned even some of those pieces and I'm like, well, you know, I don't necessarily, Jeff Okuda has been a bit of a disappointment, but he's not yes. a bad mm -hmm. player, right? In their secondary, they could probably build out their defense a little bit more. They play hard, but, um, but I mean, Aiden Hutchinson's a perfect piece for that. And, perfect. And I forgot. And, uh, and DJ Chark, they got from the Jaguars. Underrated player. Yes, which, and which I think is a great pickup, a great pickup great to go with pickup. St. Brown and Hawkinson. I mean, I really think they've actually, they've done a really good job at filling the team out. Yeah. They're not, I don't think they're going to pull anybody away, but I think they're going to play hard and be kind of an annoying team to the, play. The, yeah. They'll be an annoyance. Um, and I could totally see the lions at 
having success and having a better record than a lot of people anticipate. And maybe say if the Vikings just like Mc oh, McConnell, geez, O'Connell flames out and he doesn't have the special sauce from the McVay tree. Who knows? I don't know if that's the case. Cause it seemed like McVay was mostly calling plays in LA when he was there. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen, but it could, I could see the Lions finishing second in the division. I mean, they, and, and also you have to, a lot, a lot of those games that they lost, they lost with a worse team on like either unbelievably anomalous circumstances, like Justin Tucker in the, in, in the end of regulation, hitting a, a record 66 <laughs> yard field goal yeah. or like an absolutely backbreaking fashion. If a few of those games go their way, they win three more games that year. And this team is better than they were last year. Yep. But you know who's not a good team? The Chicago Bears. Oh, this is I I don't even know if I can comment on this team. They're roster wise. The Falcons or the Bears are the worst teams in the NFL. And I'm sad for Justin Fields because I actually he's I'm desperate for him to get out of it. <laughs> he's a stud. And I wish he wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, I feel so bad for him. But I mean the Bears, for a big market team like themselves, and the Jets are another example of this, are so badly mismanaged. Oh. And, like, I mean, they're going to let uh, Rokon Smith walk next year because they couldn't give him a contract. And, frankly, he's miserable on the team. He's he hates being there. <laughs> I doubt he plays hard this year. Yeah, I would think, hey, let me let me keep my body ready for the next team. <laughs> Maybe he should. Well, and also listen. My, what I what bought, what also really frustrates me is, it's one of those things where it's like, I can't blame Matt Eberflus. Eberflus. I can only really blame Ryan Pace and and Nagy initially, the former regime before Ryan Poles and and uh, well, Eberflus Nagy came is, in. I hate him forever. I he's can't, he's I, one of the worst head coaches that I've ever seen in my entire life. And um, we just lived through Urban Meyer. Exactly the, the the guy the guy who was so desperate he had a six kicker tryout to avoid the double doink again. That's what he was focusing yeah. on in the preseason a few seasons ago, Matt Nagy. So the what I, what I mean by this is that it doesn't matter if your progeny is there in the sense of Matt Nagy came from the Andy Reid coaching tree. That doesn't make him a good coach. Mm -mm. That doesn't make him a smart coach. That doesn't make him a dynamic coach. He put his scheme for Justin Fields in as opposed to having Justin Fields fit, as opposed to having his scheme fit the quarterback. He wanted to have the quarterback fit his scheme. So, he did an absolute disservice to Justin Fields. And this this team, even now with the new GM, had the audacity to keep Darnell Mooney and Byron Pringle as their top two wide receivers. And in the second round, draft oh. two guys in the secondary, Jahan Brisker out of, out of Penn State and uh, Kyler Murray, out of, Kyler Gordon out of Washington, who I don't think are bad players, but you just don't need them. They are yeah. not needs. No. And, and, and they are not uh, – the offensive line is trash. There's not really many impact players. I mean uh, – there's not really many impact players on the defensive side of the ball. And a lot of guys are going to be playing for next year and their careers and who they're going to, who's, who's uh, and getting paid. And Justin Fields deserves more than this. I, I'm like pleasantly surprised by how good he's been, especially under the circumstances, but, and Cole Komet, I think is a really nice piece who uh, I, I liked coming out of Notre Dame. He came out of Notre Dame, right? Cole Komet. Um, Bradley's going to double check that for me, but, um, you know, other than that, I, He's I, yeah, I've, uh, I, other than that, it's just, it is bad. Um, so they will be, they are definitely in the running for the first overall pick in the draft coming up for also, sure. Also bears, bears fans. I realize that forgive me for saying this. I understand that you were probably, if not more so just as mentally ill as I am. And I understand <laughs> that you were all, you were masochists like me. Don't don't take offense to these these evaluations. I'm upset for them, and I'm also disappointed with them. I'm upset for as you as a Jets fan, as yeah. a Jets fan as well. I've seen this before. I know this. I yeah. live. I live in. I live in the squalor as well. So don't <laughs> don't take don't take it the wrong way. I'm not. I'm not punching down. I'm punching sideways. <laughs> yeah. uh, and also just a sympathetic punch. Yeah. But tap or right. a shake. Snap out of it. Right. <laughs> 